Have you ever wondered how websites and apps make sure the right person or system is accessing the right data? Why can you log into your email from your phone but not someone else's? That's all thanks to API authentication. In this video, we'll break down three of the most popular authentication methods, API keys, JWT, and OAuth. By the end, you'll know exactly when to use each one and why they matter in modern software development. Every time you log into an app, whether it's checking your bank balance, sending a message, or even just using Google Maps, an API is working behind the scenes to fetch data for you. But before that happens, the API needs to know who are you. And more importantly, should you have access to this data? That's where API authentication comes in. It ensures that only authorized users and applications can interact with an API, preventing unauthorized access, data leaks, and security breaches. Without authentication, anyone could access sensitive data, modify records, or even shut down critical systems. Imagine if anyone could withdraw money from a bank's API just by knowing the URL. That's why strong authentication mechanisms are essential. There are many ways to authenticate users and applications, but the three most common methods are API keys, a simple, unique key that's used to access an API. Think of it like a password for an application. JWT, JSON Web Tokens, a self-contained token that securely transmits user identity and claims. OAuth, a more advanced authentication framework that allows third-party logins, like sign-in with Google. Each of these methods has strengths and weaknesses, and the right one depends on your use case. If you're building a small internal service, API keys might be enough. If you need scalable, stateless authentication, JWT is a great option. And if you want to allow users to log in with external accounts, OAuth is the way to go. Let's check what is an API key. Imagine you have a VIP pass to an exclusive event. Every time you show that pass, security lets you in. That's basically how an API key works. It's a simple, unique identifier that allows access to an API. An API key is a long, randomly generated string of characters that acts as a secret token. When an application wants to access an API, it includes this key in the request. If the key is valid, the API allows the request to proceed. API keys are usually sent as part of the request to the API. There are a few common ways to include them. Some APIs allow you to pass the key directly in the URL. This method is not recommended because the key might be logged in browser history or exposed in URLs. A more secure approach is to include the API key in the request headers. This way, the key stays hidden from URLs and logs. Many APIs require this method because it adds an extra layer of security. So, when is it actually a good idea to use API keys? They work best when you need basic authentication without user-specific data. Best use cases, public APIs, weather, maps, stock market data, internal microservices, connecting backend services within a company, rate limiting and analytics, tracking API usage without full authentication. However, for more secure applications, like handling sensitive user data, other authentication methods like are much safer. Let's check what is an JWT or JSON web token. Imagine you walk into an event with a special wristband. Instead of showing your ID every time, the wristband proves you're allowed inside. That's exactly how JWTS work for authentication. JWT or JSON web token is a compact self-contained way to securely transmit information between parties. It's widely used for authentication in web and mobile apps, allowing users to log in once and remain authenticated without sending their credentials repeatedly. But what makes JWTs unique? Unlike API keys, which are just static keys, JWTs contain structured information that can be verified and trusted. A JWT consists of three main parts, separated by dots. Let's break it down. Header specifies the type of token and the algorithm used for encryption. Payload contains the actual data like user ID, role, or expiration time. Signature 
ensures the token is authentic and hasn't been tampered with. Because JWTs are signed using a secret key or public-private key pair, they can be verified without storing session data on the server, making them stateless and scalable. So how does JWT authentication actually work? Step one, user logs in, a user enters their credentials like email and password. Step two, server generates a JWT. If the credentials are correct, the server generates a JWT containing user details and sends it back. Step three, client stores the JWT. The client, like a web browser or mobile app, stores this token, usually in local storage or cookies. Step four, sending requests with JWT. Every time the user makes a request to a protected route, the token is sent in the authorization header. Step five, server validates the JWT. The server checks if the token is valid and hasn't expired. If everything is good, the request is processed. JWTs are commonly used in applications where authentication needs to be fast and scalable. A great example is a web or mobile app where users log in once and access different sections without re-authenticating. For example, a user logs into a social media platform, receives a JWT, and can browse their feed like posts or send messages. Since the server doesn't need to track sessions, this improves performance and scalability. Let's check what is OAuth. Have you ever logged into a website using your Google or Facebook account? That's OAuth in action. OAuth, or Open Authorization, is a protocol that allows secure access to resources without exposing user credentials. Instead of entering your username and password everywhere, OAuth lets you grant permissions to apps without sharing sensitive login details. OAuth 2.0, the most widely used version, is designed to work across web, mobile, and API-based applications, making it one of the most powerful authentication methods today. OAuth works through a series of steps where a user grants access to a third-party app without sharing their password. Step 1. User requests access. Let's say you're signing up for a new app, and instead of creating a new account, you click Login with Google. Step 2. Redirect to Authorization Server. You're redirected to Google where you see a prompt asking if you want to grant this app access to your email and profile. Step 3. User grants permission. You approve the request and Google generates an authorization code, which it sends back to the app. Step 4. App exchanges code for a token. The app sends this code to Google's authentication server, which then provides an access token. This token allows the app to fetch your profile data securely. Step five, accessing resources. Now, whenever the app needs to access your data, it uses the access token instead of storing your password. A perfect example of OAuth is social login. When you click login with Google, OAuth ensures your credentials stay secure while granting the app access to limited profile data. Another use case, APIs like GitHub and Twitter use OAuth to let third-party apps interact with accounts securely, like scheduling tweets or accessing repositories. So, which authentication method is right for you? It depends on your use case. API keys, best for simple server-to-server -server communication. If you need a quick and easy way to authenticate requests, API keys work well. But be careful. They don't offer built-in security measures like expiration or fine-grained access control. JWT, great for stateless authentication in web and mobile apps. If you need a secure, scalable way to manage user sessions without storing credentials on the server, JWT is a strong choice. OAuth, perfect when users need to authenticate through third-party services like Google or Facebook. If your app requires delegated permissions, and access to external APIs. OAuth is the way to go. Each method has its pros and cons, so choose the one that fits your security needs and application design best. Thanks for watching and see you next time.